Hi Anurag, thank you so much for Hi. taking our time to interview with us. For the viewers, may we please request you to share your results on the GMAT and the MBA applications. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks a lot, Dikshita, for having me here uh, for this interview. And uh, definitely having gone through the GMAT and the MBA process, uh, I would uh, like other applicants to benefit from my experience. Uh, so I ended up with a 750 on the GMAT. And uh, my uh, my score was uh, stronger on the verbal arena, where, where I'm stronger, with a decent quant, of course. <laughs> so it balances it, it out. And uh, I'm currently headed to HEC Paris for my MBA, where I'm admitted. Uh, I also had admits from uh, NUS Singapore and uh, University of New South Wales, Australia. But uh, HEC was the best possible. Nowadays, it's in the top 10 or top 5 of the global rankings I choose. All right, that's awesome. And congratulations on getting such an amazing score and the admit from your dream school. So congratulations Thanks. on that. So coming back to your GMAT preparation, what was that area on GMAT that you struggled with the most and how did you overcome that challenge? So, well, to be honest, see, I'm a doctor. And uh, so because of that, I've been uh, out of touch with mathematics in my daily office life for quite some time. It's been uh, six, seven years now. And if you include my MBBS time, it's been uh, more than 10 years. So obviously, though I was pretty good at maths in school, not being in touch does take a toll on it. So the quant part, I would say, was a bit harder for me, of course. And uh, for those of your viewers, applicants who are uh, from non-quant backgrounds, such as me, I would say you can easily overcome this by focusing more on your uh, verbal uh, part while also working extra hard on the quant part. I had to work extra hard on the quant part. So uh, you can definitely balance it out that way. And if you have a strong verbal, it definitely more than makes up for you. And ultimately, whenever a school or an, uh, or a large company, say McKinsey, etc., they see your GMAT scores, they'll look at your GMAT score in total first and then only at the breakdown. So having a strong verbal does matter. Yes, that is true. So, in your opinion, what are a few factors or actions you took that made all the difference? I put in extra efforts into my uh, quant preparation, as I said earlier, like f first, uh, first of all, you need to go through the GMAT books, the official prep books, as well as uh, other good books, such as I, I took a test series from your company, Experts Global, and that was most helpful. And I believe practicing concepts, learning concepts, practicing them is equally important as uh, practicing previous years, uh, GMAT papers and mock questions, etc. And uh, give as many practice tests as well. That is my advice to uh, future applicants. All right. Okay. So with the benefit of hindsight, what are a few mistakes you believe you might have committed in the process? Firstly, I would say, I mean, rushing in to take GMAT first, uh, I ended up with a 660 in my first GMAT. So that was a bit unprecedentedly low. I was definitely expecting 700 plus. I would say that students should not rush into it and take as many practice tests. But uh, what, what is most important is get your concepts clear, study the subject matter. And besides, you have to be in regular practice. If uh, because of my work schedule, all, a lot, many applicants do have busy work schedules so there are interruptions there are uh, conferences office parties uh, multi-various things i mean familial things going out with friends many things office projects every day you need to put in say at least four to five hours of work i know it's tough but we do you do need to put in four to five hours of self-study or practice for gmat and uh, this has to be done for uh, i would say a minimum of six months in hindsight, I would say a minimum of six months uh, is the su sweet spot. It may be a little lesser for somebody. It may be a bit more for somebody, depending on uh, on situation. Yeah, absolutely. So what are your thoughts about mock tests? And according to you, how many mock tests and at what frequency should the aspirants take mock tests? I would say mock tests are important, very important. But uh, they need to be spaced out. I mean, uh, like uh, once you have completed a certain section of your quant uh, verbal, you should take, uh, I mean, uh, mock tests that cater to that much of the syllabus. Uh, that may be like, say, once in two weeks or something like that. But 
then uh, bef before your actual uh, GMAT test slot that you have booked, uh, one should, uh, I mean, take uh, at least say five to 10 tests at a stretch. At a stretch, by by at a stretch, I mean, uh, it should be over say, ten, if uh, it's five tests spaced out over 10 days, if maybe 10 spaced out over 15 to 20 days, 20 days, I mean, uh, not less than that. Too many tests also harm you because GMAT is a test of your uh, sustenance and longevity as well, because the test itself is uh, between three to four hours, and therefore you should not overexert as well. That is as important. Yes, absolutely. Maintaining that balance is crucial while yeah. taking mock yeah. tests. So, how was your experience of applying to V schools, and what are a few things you believe you did correctly in achieving those admits? Uh, to be honest, my experience of applying to V schools, it was a mixed bag. I was applying only to uh, good international schools abroad and uh, I didn't apply to the Indian schools I was only looking abroad. So I'll speak uh, firstly from that perspective. So I would say what I did correctly was if you look at the European schools, they are, uh, I would say, perfect for applicants with uh, about uh, five to seven years or five to eight years of work experience. And uh, those uh, who are aged around 28 to 30, maybe 28 to 32 as well. So uh, they stand a better chance there. I fell into that bracket. I, I was uh, about 29, just turned 29 when I applied. So I did have a better chance there. What happens is people with this age bracket and having uh, many years of work experience, I had seven years of work experience by the time, uh, almost seven years of work experience by the time I applied. Uh, so uh, American, the top American B schools, the top five, six, uh, Harvard, Wharton, Columbia, etc. Uh, they prefer younger candidates with, who are a little lesser experienced. European schools have a very different mindset. I'm talking about the top European schools, NCRD, HEC, London Business School, etc. Or Oxford, Cambridge, etc. So you must know where to apply, number one, mm -hmm. most importantly, because uh, different schools cater to different groups of target uh, candidates. And number two, I would say, depending on your school's profile, depending on which country you come from and your background, of course. So I, I believe knowing where to apply is most important. Right. And what uh, applicants miss out on is uh, not focusing enough on building their profile, just working too much on GMAT, especially Indian applicants. So I think a holistic view is important, especially for the European schools. They focus on a good GMAT as well as holistic work experience, work achievements, extracurriculars, international work experience, a mix of all of these. You have to showcase all of these in your application to get success. Yes, that is so true. So what would you like to say about your learnings from managing the application timelines? Managing the application timeline, I would uh, suggest uh, people to start early, at least a year, year early, if possible, even uh, earlier. At least why I say at least a year early is because uh, if you apply in, uh, depending on your GMAT score profile and many things, and of course, uh, whether you have time, then if you apply in round one, a, a candidate who has got uh, more or less everything sorted out uh, mm -hmm. ticks and who ticks all the boxes has a better chance of applying in round one or maybe in round two. Some of the schools have rolling admissions seven or eight rounds. So if you apply in round one or two or even three, you definitely have a better chance of getting it. Anyway, that, that is true across schools. So definitely start early, get sorted your GMAT mm -hmm. because uh, the score is valid for five years. So definitely take care of your GMAT first. And meanwhile, also uh, do not neglect office. So, <laughs> uh, definitely keep working on your projects. Also, I would say uh, do a bit of extra curriculum. I mean, a lot of lot many people uh, leave out extra curriculum after the college. So extra curriculum need not be if you are good at sports. So say I am good at quizzing. I uh, I do quizzing at the uh, national and international level. I mean, if you are involved in some uh, social impact work, for example, uh, working with an NGO to help orphan children or say, uh, whatever, say you are volunteering for a midday meal scheme, etc. So that is a great service to humanity and that will also uh, stand your, uh, your MBA application in good state. So I, I would say all these parameters are important. And you need to focus on all of these while starting early. So a uh, sweet spot would be starting off planning at least one and a half years earlier mm -hmm. and uh, starting off with your application preparation, maybe 
just under one year. All right. Okay. So, would you like to share your interview experience with the B schools? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> So the interview, I I was interviewed at a few schools. Uh, obviously, HEC where I got in. I was also admitted to NUS National University of Singapore and uh, University of New South Wales, Australia, and a few other schools. So what I would say is, usually at some of the schools they have two interviewers. So uh, one would be one who belongs to your country. For example, I am Indian. So one of the interviewers would likely be an indian uh, who is an alum from that school and uh, the other would be somebody who is an inter- uh, who is an international mb that is not uh, belonging to your country and also an alum to your school some schools do this uh, these kind of alum interviews alumni interviews so one of them is usually a bit younger maybe close to your age one of them is uh, much more older or experienced and uh, i think that kind of balances it out i mean in terms of perspectives work experience everything so you will be asked questions like uh, i mean of course why why do you want to do mba why do you want to do an mba now what is your motivation to do mba describe a few of your achievements in the workplace and for this question i would say the answer should be like uh, you should be showing your impact rather than uh, describing what positions you have held or etc your impact can be different like say for example i am a doctor for a doctor candidate it can be the number of patients lives you have made a difference to for a military candidate it can be like uh, how you have improved the lives of soldiers for somebody who is doing social work uh, how, what you have done to uplift society if somebody in uh, the commercial space maybe uh, how you have increased the company's finance something of that sort besides uh, you are asked some behavioral questions and some questions to test your judgment such as uh, like describe a situation where you failed or describe a situation where you thought you would fail but ultimately you succeeded if uh, given a tough choice kind uh, tough choice what would you do these kinds of questions a huge list of such questions is available on the net and we can go through i would say there are video interviews also for some school which are pre recorded but uh, but the questions are spontaneous you don't get to know the questions so these are equally important while applying and uh, candidates must prepare well in advance both behavioral type of questions as well as uh, i mean questions that tell more about yourself okay that's interesting so what would be your final message or suggestion to all the future candidates watching this video i'll give a few take home points for all future applicants and candidates watching the video with regards to gmat number 1 is give ample time it does take 6 months of preparation contrary to what some of the websites claim like uh, some complete gmat in one month or two months etc and it's possible for some but on an average prepare for 6 months give ample time for preparation study daily give at least 4 to 5 hours uh, per day for preparation for 6 months and use the right resources definitely the official gmat books various other books and uh, of course your website experts global is pretty good i've used your test series i, I would recommend that and uh, finally as regards gmat is uh, for those students i'm repeating for those students who are not from a quant quant heavy background you can easily make up with the verbal while not neglecting your quant part if you for an indian candidate if you uh, get into a zone above say 730 you are uh, definitely you definitely merit getting an interview call at least from most of the good universities uh, both uh, both in uh, us or europe those are the two main destinations as well as uh, elsewhere uh, so this is as per gmat as regards the mba applications number one i would say that number one is gmat is an exclusion criteria not an inclusion criteria a low gmat can get you out a high gmat keeps you in contention may not get you so definitely sort out your gmat first but as i have said previously work on your entire application build your profile do not neglect your extra curriculars or social impact work or whatever any and uh, every extra curricular work that is interesting is taken into account by most of the good schools good at social impact work somebody is involved with red cross etc all of this is important and not to be neglected definitely do not neglect your work seek out more projects and uh, try to showcase what impact your work has created either for your organization or for society or uh, nation as a whole uh, rather than just saying that what positions you have held etc and uh, how soon you were promoted 
there's not much you can do about uh, your academics the your college is already passed so do not bother much about that but yes having a good college degree with a good percentage etc does help so try to showcase that that is as important and uh, last but not the least i would say know where to apply there are uh, schools use different parameters so can, uh, as i would say younger candidates uh, with uh, a little lesser experience say 3 to 4 years experience stand a better chance in some of the american schools uh, a slight slightly older candidates with more work experience over 5 to 6 years stand a better chance in the good european schools as well as say australia singapore etc that would be all from my side okay this is awesome and it's amazing how you actually summarized all your pointers and learnings for the future candidates so thank you so much for doing that how excited are you to start your mba journey at hcc paris i uh, extremely extremely excited i'm uh, very much looking forward to my uh, mba journey starting soon enough within the next two odd months hope all goes well right from here and uh, both the mba and uh, the post m uh, the post mba prospects jobs etc that i land desired roles let's see mm-hmm. hope it works out for you. it will for sure all the very best thank you for your future endeavors and thank you so much for taking out time to interview with us today thanks and welcome for giving uh, me this opportunity i am i feel uh, great to be helping out other future candidates yes i'm sure your suggestions are going to help a lot of students in their journey to success yeah hopefully okay that's great thanks bye anurag take care thank you good thank day thank you good day